Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Welcome to this next video in our series about playback in Dorico. We've been looking at all of the individual components that go into managing playback in Dorico. Now we're going to look at how all of those moving parts come together to form something called a playback template. Let's get to it. In Dorico, a playback template contains all of the information needed to load the correct sounds for instruments in your project and then fully utilize those sounds based on the music in your score. Dorico Pro, Elements and SE all come bundled with various sound libraries and its playback templates that allow these to work with your projects automatically. It means all you have to do is add players and instruments to your score and input music for them and Dorico will handle the playback. You can change the playback template for the active project by opening the play menu and choosing playback templates. Double click to apply a new playback template. You can set the default playback template in preferences at the top of the play page. So why might you want to change the playback template? Well, one reason could be you started work on a large project back in the studio using your desktop computer and all of your best sounds. But now you're out on the road working with a laptop. You don't have access to those sounds and you need to use a lighter setup. It's as simple as changing the playback template and carrying on working. Once you're back in the studio, you can swap back to the original playback template and make use of those other sounds again. The other reason is to make the best use of various different sound libraries. Some projects may call for quite different setups, so it's great to be able to quickly jump between configurations without lengthy setup routines. A reference to the playback template is saved with your project, meaning when you reopen it, it'll look for that playback template and load it if it can. If the playback template is not found on your system, you'll be warned that it's not available, but the project will still open and will still attempt to load the sounds it was saved with. Now, obviously, if a sound library that the playback template references is not available, it will not be possible to load those sounds. You can export a playback template so you can share it with others or import it to another machine on which you use Dorico. There are already a number of playback templates available for some of the more popular sound libraries. Many of these have been created by my good friend and longtime colleague, John Barron, who maintains a great resources page on our blog where he keeps these and many other playback templates that have been created by members of our wonderful community and shared with him. I'll put a link to that page in the description. As we've seen in previous videos, the chain from notation to sound library starts with a playing technique or similar marking that sends a playback technique to an expression map that then controls the sound library preset loaded into your VST instrument. Now, in order to replicate this process across different projects, Dorico must know which preset to load into which VST instrument. This is the final piece of the puzzle, and we call it an endpoint. An endpoint is the term used to describe a sound library preset loaded into a certain slot or channel on a specific VST instrument. It's the end of the chain, the final destination of all of these interconnected components. It's what makes the sound. In play mode, you can show a VST instrument to see what sounds are loaded and how it is set up. You can also open the endpoint setup dialog, which shows the ports and channels in use how Dorico instruments are assigned to each one and the expression map and potentially percussion map controlling the VST presets. By loading VST sounds, routing Dorico instruments to them and assigning expression and percussion maps, you have unwittingly been creating endpoint configurations. These endpoint configurations can be saved and then used either in isolation or together with other endpoint configurations to build a playback template that covers all possible instruments and techniques. When you save an endpoint configuration, Dorico is saving the state of the VST instrument, including which presets are loaded into which slots, the endpoint setup, so which Dorico instruments are playing back through which of the VST's channels, 
the expression map used by each instrument and percussion map if there is one, and any custom playing techniques and playback techniques used by those expression maps. You can save an endpoint configuration for an individual endpoint setup, or you can save one configuration for all endpoint setups in the current project. That way, you can build up your playback requirements for an entire ensemble and then save one configuration that can be used in a playback template to recreate playback for any instruments in that ensemble in future projects. We'll be looking at editing and creating playback templates over the next couple of videos. So for now, just a couple of other points that are good to know. If your playback sounds get in a bit of a muddle, you can reapply the playback template to get back to a clean setup. In the Play menu, choose Playback Templates, then simply click Apply and Close. Just be aware that this will overwrite any playback changes you've applied in your project, including intended ones, so please treat it with a little caution. There's a dedicated Silence Playback Template that loads no sounds. If you don't need to audition your music for a time, you can apply the Silence Playback Template which means you won't need to wait for sounds to load and project file sizes will be significantly smaller as no playback data will be being saved. Of course, it also means you won't hear anything during playback. If you always want this behavior, you can set the default playback template in preferences to silence. And if this is the specific information you were looking for when you started watching this tutorial series, I sincerely apologize that you've had to sit through nine videos of me harping on about all this playback stuff before I mentioned it. Playback templates can include a reference to a space template, Dorico's feature for defining pan and reverb settings across a multi-dimensional space. Even so, if a space template override is set in preferences, this is the one that will be applied, not the one defined in the playback template. When exporting a playback template, any referenced space template will be included in the export. Next, we'll look at mixing and matching playback templates so that you can choose, for example, to use a particular sound library for some instruments and let's say, note performer for everything else. I hope you'll join me. I do hope you found this video useful. Please click the like button if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing to our channel, clicking the bell for alerts. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.